hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Off Point at 30. Um, my name's Les Steed, and this uh, is... Marlon White. Hitting this cue absolutely perfect every time. <laughs> um, we are uh, two gentlemen who are in our, you know, um, round about the age of 30. Um, this is about how we've gone off point in life, and um, the discussion tends to follow the pattern. Um, but today's topic that we wanted to start with is how uh, behaviours change as you go through your 20s and into your yeah. 30s. Um, I remember, um, you know, in that transition to being an adult. But not, to be not honest, like, I think it changes a lot sooner, to be honest. Um, earlier, in fact, from your teens into your 20s and then into your 30s. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think you're constantly changing, you're maturing. Yeah, I don't think it's just about puberty either. I think that um, it's sort of like social, sort of what you want socially yeah. as well, which I think is actually quite a weird thing because I still kind of like Lego. But at the same time... You know time, what? It's funny that you actually said Lego because I was in um, Sainsbury's just now, yeah. after the gym, and then I kind of saw Lego, and I'm like, oh, should I buy some Lego? Yeah, and I, yeah. I thought that I, re- I remembered I'm, I'm, I'm like 29. Yeah, but it's still kind of, <laughs> I, think, I think when I become a dad, yeah. if, you know, like, because, yeah. And he brought back, like, memories and everything. I wasn't, like, yeah, I, wasn't big, I, was, I wasn't big into Legos, but I was into, um, I don't know if you ever played with um, Kinect. Yeah, I did a little bit. Yeah, I was, uh, I was really into Kinect, and I, I played with Kinect longer than I should have in life. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I always <laughs> so my mum took it away from me. Yeah, I, my mum and dad, I think they were having that stage where I was 13 going, and they were a little thing and I'm going to make you into yeah. a story. And it turns out it's gone quite well because yeah. I became a writer. Yeah. Um, that's what I was as well. I used to like make my connects into like little men and kind of tell a story and have like a big story. Yeah, going same. Because I, like, I think I have an imag- like imaginative mind. Yeah, and like, yeah. all sitting around you yeah. and you're like this little bit over yeah. here and this little bit over here. I like Because I like to also invent my own stories yeah, and stuff like that. But I guess, like, as a parent, maybe you think that's a bit weird and a bit like... I don't know. I don't yeah. think it is. Yeah. I, mean, I, think, I it, think it is, looking back on it now. But I think at the like, time... Because, yeah, I mean, people tell you you should read books yeah. and, you know, you should do this and this. Yeah. But And then, of course, like, I think as you become an adult, like, that sort of... That acceptability of having an imagination, yeah. for, or at least, you know, in that regard, tends to have to become either a skill. Like, you know, you have to become an author who's a good writer and whatever. And all you... But just being able to tell your own little stories, it, it kind of fluctuates as you go on about how acceptable that is. But, you know, like, people get huge amounts of praise. Like, you know, like, if, for example, you know, like, um, like Lord of the Rings, like, you know, like, not to date us here, but Tolkien's ancestors just died yesterday. And um, this is, we're recording in mid-January. And um, this is perfectly dated there. Um, but yeah. I've actually never watched Lord of the Rings all the way through. Really? No, whatever. No. Um, no, Tell me. there's no reason I've, um, I, I watched like halfway of the first one. I just never got to, cause like three hours long and never, yeah. never got through it. It seems like a good film. Um, funny enough, I watched the, like the Hobbit, I think the Hobbit. Yeah. I've watched that a few times. Uh, it's not quite as yeah, good. Yeah. I think that they've moved away from, they've turned too much, me- leaned too heavily on CGI yeah. and things. I think the only reason I watched the Hobbit cause I was, I was going out with this girl at the time and like he wanted to watch it. So I ended up going to the cinema to watch that. Well, it's not too yeah. bad. I mean, yeah. like, you know, like it's, I, I like Martin Freeman. I think he's good. But I do think that um, with like, yeah, I think that with films nowadays, it, it's frustrating that like the way they use props has changed. Yeah. And I think that there was this really quite dark, not dark, but really quite um, feelsy. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's really sad. That's feelsy, fucking sad. Come on, mm-hmm. easy. Um, like there's this moment in film in production where um, the guy who plays Gandalf, uh, Ian McKellen, he... Um, I don't fuck that name up, Jesus! Can you imagine the backlash. <laughs> um, the um, he he just sort of stood there and he, and he just broke down in tears because he was playing to a load of green screens instead mm. of what they'd done in the original um, trilogy, where it all been like really clever sort of positioning, so it looked like he Is was it actually like on those. um on location as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean like it, I mean the whole thing was on location anyway, yeah. but um, when they built those scenes, it there's just him sitting there surrounded by green in tears. Yeah. And it's just like sad hat Gandalf. It's like watching Santa Claus mm. cry. It's like, no, <laughs> somebody give that man a hug. Mm. Um, but yeah. It must be really weird with all that green screen nowadays. Yeah. It, it's, it's Nothing's real. Yeah. yeah. And like, and as an audience as well, it's quite difficult. Because yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, they do incredible things. Like Endgame, for yeah. example. I mean, there is nowhere in reality that, that, <laughs> that they're staging that battle. No. But equally, it, it does. It, there's something really nice about mm. the solid set, and I think that act, yeah, happy actors make for a decent film. Yeah. But I mean, again, I mean, realistically, you've got to count a budget, and I think that if you but you get Michael Bay movies like Transformers, where you know you're going in for a load mm. of that, but 
they did lose their momentum once everyone because I, 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 I think it became too much of a fireworks um, yeah I, that, yeah it was, Fireworks are okay yeah. for about twenty minutes, yeah, but do. after even real fireworks, yeah. it's like okay, we're done here. I think it's a Michael Bay movie Unless you're high, you recently on rate. Netflix. I can't remember the name of it now, but yeah, it was just like it was not it wasn't really much storyline. It was just a bunch of explosion and shooting. Oh, you know what really annoys me about film is just that you you know the scene that every scene is seen in the film where it's like there's a car being chased by bad guys, oh, yeah. and for some reason the bad guys have awful aim. They, but the car would have a million bullet holes in uh, it. And somehow, first of all, the car's still running. And yeah. also, he's not hit four passengers in the, yeah. in, the in the car. He, like, no one has got a brain, you yeah. know, like, been rattled around yeah. to the point where they're like, actually, I think I have whiplash. All the windows have been shot out from the front, back, side, yeah. and nobody's been hit once. But hey, if you lie down in the footwell, yeah. then you're fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, bullshit. Everyone knows a footwell is bulletproof. Yeah, bullshit. Like, and then also, like, why are they always... Yeah. And like, okay, I watched this one, Underground, Six Underground. And yeah, like, that's the film I was talking about. Yeah. Now, I love... I I love Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. I think, I mean, like, you know, like, I recently got told that I sound like him. <laughs> Honestly, I've never been so flattered. Were they trying to tell you something? Uh, yeah, I think they were trying to sort of indicate that I should shut up. <laughs> um, but it wasn't going to work. Um, they, um, no, but like, he's a, you know, he's a good fun actor. And he's yeah. in the right place. But I can't I take him seriously. You should, you're not supposed to, I don't think. I Although he's in a couple of films yeah. so you can where you try where, you've, where you're supposed to take him seriously, I just can't take him yeah, like, I mean, after he played Deadpool, it's kind yeah. of like, you know, he's in those humid roles and also yeah. his persona in, yeah. in public, like, you know, the way he plays around with Blake Lively. And yeah. I mean, he's a funny guy. Uh, you know, I think he's fun. But um, I also think, though, that there are some roles he does play that are yeah. quite, actually quite good. This is one, um, one of my favourite films, actually, is, um, oh, I can never remember the bloody name of it. Uh, it's like where he makes a bunch of to-do lists and sells that um, that sort of, that methodology. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I digress. We're getting off. We're going off, off point. point. Hey, oh! <laughs> um, so, what was I trying to say? Yeah, Six Underground. I mean, just, like, not I couldn't to, get into the story. There is no story. Yeah. And it's like, it's like they've sort of got a bunch of kids and I'm like, okay, kids, what's cool? And it's like, they've got a guy in there called the Sky Guy. And it's like, mate, oh yeah, free running school. He starts at the top of like, so, that really famous dome in Florence. Yeah. And, um, that the free runner guy. Yeah, like, what's the fucking point? Yeah. Like we get it. He's gonna run down a hill. Like, yeah. okay, what do you do? And then he like skateboards with a with a sort of like with a grenade launcher. Yeah. And you're like, but those things won't even go off if you're in range. It's got a special range yeah. thing. So him chuck it, him shooting through a window of a moving car. Yeah. And then it blowing up. I mean, first that's a terrorist incident yeah. right there. People are gonna be noticing that. And then it's like, okay, and just I mean, I get it. it's meant to be fun. It's meant to be stuff. But yeah, like, that, that, that's the film I was even thinking about about the car being shot up to pieces. Yeah, the car's just completely like fucked. Yeah, yeah, I, totally I, fucked. I was, yeah. I do understand one person got shot, but it's like, well, he didn't get shot. He got shot. cut in half. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I think there was a girl in the car Spoilers. that got shot. I think the girl got shot. Yeah, in but she's stomach. definitely gonna bled out. But she was then. shoot. She was like shooting. Yeah. While... Oh yeah, I'm gonna get up and do my thing. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like it's, it's your turn yeah. to be cool. Do your cool thing. Yeah, it's, just... it's like one of those primary school um, things where everyone yeah. gets a go and they get their thirty seconds yeah. in the headlight. Was, in the spotlight. Although I'm watching, I think I don't know what it was, but it's that like similar to like Myth Mythbusters, where um they do tests on cars, like oh, could this car withstand being shot up to pieces like this? What is that? And it, and, it, and it was like pretty much car bullets go through cars essentially. Yeah, I think it's quite a dangerous yeah. myth that they yeah. don't. They, they, they like, go through cars, so people ducking down behind. Them. Obviously, if somebody's shooting at you, probably should duck down the behind the yeah, car. I but mean, anything yeah, really, just, just so they can't see you. But I mean, like. So there's a good chance that he's going to go through the car and hit you. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, bullets gonna... do go through cars. Yeah, bullets are pretty much designed yeah. to go cars through. Cars are not bulletproof, it. unless you get a bulletproof car. Uh, there's a certain caliber yeah. that will stop that, you yeah. know, like pretty much stop any yeah. bullet. Um, but yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. But I think that, like, movies. Yeah, in so many films and TV shows, the, the, like, the bad guys are shooting, like, yeah. and then it's like. <laughs> I mean, it was they hit nobody. Star Wars. Yeah. yeah, with Star Wars, that's funny, but now yeah. they're kind of slightly more accurate. Yeah. It's a bit like, oh. And like you know, you can't really have fun. And the good them. guys got such a like good aim. Yeah, they just aim. Like, they just shoot once, and they're like the perfect bad guy. Like, and the, the, the good guy just shoots like power, and the guy's dead. Oh no! But then again, though, it, it is quite badass when you've got like when it, in reality yeah. people start pouting that. Like for example, I think it was the Russians were trying to invade the Finns in World War Two. Yeah. See, we are going off point again. Um, but um, they oh no, it was the Swiss. They were going to invade the Swiss, yeah. and the Swiss were just like, all right, or oh, you could fuck off. And um, the Russians said, oh, we've got two, a million men and you only have 500,000. 500, yeah. Double your men. We will crush you. What are you going to say to that? Like, what will your soldiers do? And the Swiss replied with, shoot twice and go home. <laughs> it was like, and, and the whole world for like 
another hundred years has gone, oh, bravo. <laughs> like, that is a comeback. Yeah. Like, yeah. But anyway, um, so what we were talking about was sort of how, yeah, behaviours change. And yeah. I think that, I think part of, what I find quite interesting is like that being an adult who's like in your 20s, playing with Lego, for example, um, is considered to be a bit weird. Definitely. And, yeah. And like, for the record, I mean, you know, like, apart from like, we have like a tradition in our house where it's like stocking Lego. Yeah. And one year, and I will name the year, it's 2013, in which there was no Lego in the stocking. And it ruined Christmas. <laughs> it really did. You go, got, everybody just kicked you off a bit. You don't forget this kind of shit, yeah. Marlon. You just don't forget it. And but it, the point I'm trying to get to is that when if you then become a father and you still have that yeah. little part inside you that's like the kids, fuck yeah, Lego, yeah. then you're gonna make a great dad. Yeah. And I think there's nothing sadder than the day that um, I don't find a little bit exciting when you know, like the idea of like a big Lego thing, quite exciting. I know that when I was a kid, my dad would basically build it for us. Yeah, because he was like, oh no, the nana get you. Loads of Lego, it's like worth like 60 quid. You can have 20 quid on the bitch. Uh, you know, like, Father Christmas only spent 50 quid. <laughs> but like, yeah, and like, I think dads like love that shit. But I think mums do as well. Yeah. I think, you know, and I think... It was, I have like uncles and all that that used to kind of um, join in like playing the PlayStation and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I want to do that with my yeah. kids as well when I'm yeah. when I'm like... like my I, uncle, when I got a PlayStation, my uncle used to live with me up, up until I was 10 years old. So when I got a PlayStation... He was all over that. Yeah, in it. Like, and I caught him like I came home from school one day and he was just in my room playing yeah. on my PlayStation. <laughs> it's like you know, like that moment of yeah. oh, I got five minutes to myself. <laughs> Three hours later, no, just tell him to fuck off yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the microphone, mouthing off at a twelve-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna kill your mum. <laughs> yeah, but um, that like, yeah, talking about changing when people grow up, I think yeah, that change happens a lot earlier than your twenties, really. Because I remember there's people that I absolutely hated in school but, or didn't like or didn't get along with. And um, by the time we got to sixth form, we, I ended up becoming friends with them and hanging out with them. Yeah. Because yeah, you just, like, change because you're no longer, I think, the like, as you get older, I rec- I, I, I've been thinking that you start being cool is no longer, no, I've seen that. No, it's no longer as important to you. Yeah. It's like, for example, I work now, so I could go out and buy probably designer clothes or buy, like, but, like a it's bunch just- of, like... There's a bunch, of, yeah, there's a bunch of like night trainers I've seen like the kids wearing. I'm like, oh, that's, I, I like those, but I'm thinking bigger now. I'm thinking, yeah, I could go and buy ten pairs of night trainers, but oh, turn it like a yeah, pay but, to eat. yeah, or oh, yeah. or I could save that money to do something like mm, bits and more substantial with sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, and I think like as you get older, you stop caring as much. Like it's been a while since I even bought designer clothes. So I, just, I haven't yeah. actually been to shopping. Yeah. Oh, no, I tried to go shopping last weekend actually. Um, uh, I was out with my girlfriend. And um, and like we went around House of Fraser, and there were these shirts that were like eighty, ninety quid. Yeah. And I was like, I can't imagine. I mean, I know that the idea is that you, um, you know, you have a couple of items of clothing yeah. that are really, really, pre- you know, that you'd use often, yeah. like a work shirt, for example. I would use more now that I've got a job. Yeah. Um, but and you know, you got you know, like, you invest in a good hoodie. I'd spend about what eighty quid in a decent hoodie. But it'd have to be like a really nice fluffy hoodie that I'd you know, wear. You know, like, I don't, I got, I got hoodies, but I, have, I just don't wear them anymore. Really? I've gone to, that's a, that's another like, part. Does your girlfriend do it instead, though? What? So your fiance, does she wear them? Um, no. Actually, today, like the only time I, I wear hoodies, mine from a few girls. the only time I wear um hoodies is um to the gym. But like, I mean, like just by day to day, no, I don't wear hoodies anymore. Yeah, I'm wearing one now, yeah. but I mean, I, I wish I could. I, I bought like a, I went to America about a year ago, and I bought like a nice Ralph Lauren hoodie that oh, I've ne- cool. got the price tag still on it. I've never worn. Really? It. Yeah. Can I have it? No. Oh. Won't fit you anyway. Well, yeah, I, like <laughs> I like the whole big sort of flipping. It's not just girls who like that, by the way. It's like.